Hello, everybody. It's my pleasure to welcome everyone to this webinar on exposing GraphQLs as managed APIs. I'm Fazlan Nazi. I'm an associate technical lead for WSR2, working with the API manager team. Along with me is Hiranya Kavishani, who is a software engineer, also from the API manager team. Today, we both will be walking you through this webinar and discussing what GraphQL is and how WC2 API Manager 3.0 supports exposing GraphQL services as managed APIs. Let's get started. Following is the plan for the rest of the app. First of all, we will be br briefly discussing what GraphQL is and how it differs from REST. And then we will be having a look on why API management is needed and why GraphQL API management brings in new challenges to traditional API management. Afterwards, we will introduce you to the GraphQL features of API Manager 3.0, which is the main topic of this webinar and showing you a live demonstration on how everything works. Finally, we will present you our roadmap on upcoming features related to GraphQL and finish it off with a Q&A session. Although our main intention is not to teach you what GraphQL is, we believe a brief introduction can help you understand what is to follow. This introduction isn't meant to be complete but a brief explanation on why it was invented and the benefit it benefits it brings into building applications in the modern era. It is a query language for your API, not a programming language. This has gained a lot of popularity lately and a large community has come along to contribute to the GraphQL ecosystem. Ask what you need and get exactly that. This is regarded as the best value addition GraphQL has introduced. Client applications can request only the data they require and as a result, make applications more efficient. This has been the major reason for multiple organizations to adopt this technology. This was developed internally by Facebook in 2012 before being publicly released in 2015. Although it was released not too many years ago, it seems it's becoming very popular at the moment. It was initially developed to improve the Facebook mobile app and today it powers over billions of API calls a day. There is a specification and a reference implementation which you can download via these URLs. The reference implementation is in JavaScript. Implementations of the GraphQL, client and server in various other languages are also available. This makes existing systems that are developed with various programming languages to embrace GraphQL into their software with ease. GraphQL community is also very active around the world and hosts various conferences throughout the year. Some organizations have come along to form a foundation. All these organizations have been exposing their public APIs via GraphQL and have had immense success since this shift. It is typically served over HTTP via a single endpoint, which expresses the full set of capabilities of the service. Whereas a REST service would have multiple endpoints for each of its service. It is actually reported that Facebook has been serving thousands of client versions over a single GraphQL endpoint for years without a hassle. 
Now let's look at what a type system means. What you see on the right is a type system of a GraphQL API. Each one of the GraphQL APIs would have a type system similar to this. It defines the capabilities of an API. All the types exposed in an API are written down in a language called the GraphQL schema definition language. This allows us to talk about GraphQL schemas in a language agnostic way. It is a contract between the client and the server. And once it is defined, both sides are aware of the structure. There are some special root types which are query, mutation, and subscription. On the image, what you see on the bottom is a query type. Queries are you used to fetch data. Mutations are used to modify or create data. Subscriptions are used to enable an event-based PubSub model. What you see on this slide is a sample query sent to the Facebook GraphQL API. You can see that the response data closely resembles the structure of the query. It has responded with only what the query asked for. Nothing less and nothing more. In this example, I have invoked the GitHub GraphQL API with a query to fetch the number of repositories I have in my account. Along with it, I'm also asking for the organization I work for and GitHub has responded with those details. I mentioned previously that there are three kinds of root types. We already saw two examples of the query type. Following is an example of a mutation type. Mutations are used to create, modify, or delete server-side data. As you can see in this example, a mutation is sent over to the server to create a person with name as Alice and age as 36. Once it is created, the client asks for the ID of the created person and the server has responded with exactly as the client wanted. The other type is subscription. This enables servers to communicate to the client once an event the client interested in is occurred on the server. This is typically implemented via WebSocket using its full duplexity support. This image depicts how a typical subscription flow would work in GraphQL. Now let's move on to discuss the differences between GraphQL and REST. I'm sure all of you have played around with RESTful systems for years and would be interested in knowing what are the main differences of GraphQL and REST. REST and GraphQL are two ways to exchange data between the client and the server. The REST-based approach is the traditional way of doing so and has been adopted in many systems over the years. GraphQL is considered as the revolutionary method to think about APIs. These days, we can see huge companies, awesome projects popping up every week with GraphQL. First, Let's take an, an example use case and identify how it can be solved using REST and GraphQL. In this example, an application needs to display the titles of the posts of a specific user and the last three followers of this user. When the service when the services are exposed via RESTful endpoints, the communication happens as follows. First, 
the client sends a request to the user endpoint to fetch the basic details of the user. A second request is sent to fetch the post of this user. Finally, another request is sent to fetch the followers of this user. So in order to fulfill the requirement, the client app had to send three requests to the server. Let's see how the same thing can be done via a GraphQL service. As you can see, in this case, all the information the client needs can be fetched by just one request by specifying exactly what it needs. As a result, it makes the application less chatty than the rest case. The client also has freedom to fetch any other field it needs by just modifying the query slightly. This is the main strength of GraphQL, as I explained initially. In other words, ask what you need and get exactly that. Now, let's look into the strengths and weaknesses of GraphQL. No more overfetching and underfetching. Often, a REST endpoint will give you more information than what the client needs in a single request. This is called overfetching. In GraphQL endpoints, the clients will not get any additional information than what it requested for. Therefore, GraphQL solves overfetching. In order to cater a requirement, a client will have to call multiple REST endpoints to get all the data it requires, just like in the previous example. This is called underfetching. In GraphQL case, this will not happen since the client can request all what it wants in one go. Therefore, GraphQL also solves underfetching. Rapid product iterations on the front end. So changes on the client side can be made without any extra work on the server. Since clients can specify their exact data requirements, the backend engineers uh, doesn't need to make adjustments when the design and data needs on the front ends change. Uh, this gives the ability to build APIs that are easier to evolve. Insightful analytics on the back end. So GraphQL allows you to have fine-grained insights about the data that's requested on the back end, since each client specifies exactly what information it's interested in. In other words, there is no select star operation support. So you will know how your API is being used to the individual level. This can, for example, help in evolving an API and deprecating specific fields that are not requested by any clients anymore. Benefits of schema and type system. So once the schema is defined, the teams working on the front end and the back end can do their work without further communication. Since uh, both of them are aware of the definite structure of the data that will be sent over the network. So front-end teams can easily test their applications by mocking the required data structures. So all the above points are strengths of GraphQL. Let's, now let's look at some weaknesses as well. The queries send more bytes than this. Since the query has to follow a certain structure, the client needs to send more bytes than, a, than in the RESTful case. Caching is complicated. In an endpoint-based API, clients can use HTTP caching to easily avoid refetching resources, but it becomes a bit complicated with GraphQL. Server needs to do more processing. So in GraphQL APIs, the heavy lifting is done at the server. We have shifted certain logic to the server which previously existed in the client. Therefore, server-side logic can become a bit complex than in a RESTful API. Extra cautions for GraphQL-specific attacks. 
Attackers have figured out ways to attack GraphQL APIs in various ways. And this has resulted in a state where API developers need to be cautious about these threats when developing these APIs so that they can implement necessary precautions. GraphQL is not a silver bullet where it works perfectly for all cases. As developers and architects, you will need to make a sound judgment on whether it is going to suit the requirements of your system before trying to use GraphQL for all of your projects. Now that we have an understanding about GraphQL, let's move into managing these APIs. Before delving into it, let's understand what API management is briefly. I would like to put it this way so that you can understand what API management brings into the table. Typically, most of your backend services have cross-cutting concerns like authentication, authorization, rate limiting, and so on. If developers implement these logics by themselves, it can soon become repetitive and hard to maintain. What if some other layer can take care of this before the request is served from the backend so that you can ignore all those aspects and focus only on the business logic? Wouldn't that be great? So this is exactly what API management is here to solve. But along with those core capabilities, it also brings in various other advantages to your organization, like providing a platform to discover your APIs, uh, document your APIs, also to expose a user-friendly interface of your service, which is easier to use than your actual service. These are only a, only a small subset of the features of API management. When it comes to managing GraphQL services, we need some level of support from the API management layer in order to fulfill GraphQL specific requirements. Following is a list of features which would be ideal for managing GraphQL APIs. First class support for creating GraphQL APIs. So GraphQL services could have been exposed via an API management layer, even without first-class support for it, just like a REST service. Some of you might have been doing this already in your existing deployments. What we mean by first-class support here is to treat GraphQL specific characteristics specifically and apply API management to them to support GraphQL specific use cases. Different levels of permissions for each operation. There can be operations which can be done only for a subset of users in your organization. An API management tool should be able to assign different levels of permissions to its operations so that it can look into the incoming query and decide whether to allow or block the call. Different levels of rate limiting for each operation. There can be specific operations which can be expensive to execute on the server, allowing the same rate limits to all operations or treating all of them similarly will not be a good idea in production systems. API developers should be able to recognize these expensive operations and assign rate limits accordingly. Threat protection. Since the client has the freedom to request any amount of data from the server, a malicious request with nested queries can stress the server if repeated in scale. An API management layer can be used to protect these types of requests by inspecting whether a query exceeds a certain depth and so on. Analyzing the depth is only one example. There can be other policies we can execute before proceeding to route the request to the backend. Operational level analytics. As I explained previously, it allows you to have fine-grained insights about the data 
that's requested on the back end. Also, you can do low level performance monitoring on the requests that are processed by your server. I believe now you would have gained an understanding about why we need API management and on which aspects GraphQL API management differs from traditional API management. Now, my colleague Hiranya will take over and demonstrate the GraphQL support we have implemented with WC2 API Manager 3.0. Thank you, Faslan. As my colleague explained, we have looked into how GraphQL API management is different from traditional API management and brought in various features to support several use cases. Let's move on to see how WSO2 API Manager 3.0 facilitates exposing GraphQL APIs. We have introduced first class support for GraphQL APIs, including a couple of features like uh, creating a GraphQL API using an STL definition, enhance the API listing by categorizing them with a separate tag. Uh, so this makes them clearly identifiable for both the API developers and application developers. And uh, operation listing for all the query, mutation, and subscription type operations that are available in the given schema. And uh, instead of uh, open API definition, uh, GraphQL schema definition will be shown for the GraphQL APIs. And uh, there is an option to download the schema definition in the both uh, publish and developer portals. Also, API developers and application developers are able to search APIs of the GraphQL type using type colon GraphQL in the search bar. And another important support that we have introduced here is uh, providing a facility uh, for API developer to add uh, operation level security, authorization, rate limiting to secure their API from unintentional or unauthorized parties and control the backend traffic based on the operations. Uh, now I'm going to demonstrate uh, this feature. First of all, we are going to show the schema definition file of the API that we are going to create today. So you can see this is the schema definition of the country's API, which is publicly available. It has only query uh, operations to retrieve the information of continents, countries, and languages as required. Before the demo, I am going to invoke this API using an online tool called GraphQL Playground, which is available on the internet in order to get an idea about how GraphQL works. So now I'm going to add the endpoint at here. Once we add the endpoint, it will automatically fetch the schema schema and docs at here let's see what happened when we send a query requesting name and code of the languages languages code name now you can see then it provides exactly what i asked when I remove the code, it will only retrieve the names of the languages. In terms of the GraphQL concept, this is what we previously mean by ask what you need and get exactly that. What you saw is how country's GraphQL API works without an API manager. Now let's see how we can expose this GraphQL API as a managed API through WS2 API 3.0.0. So, uh, in order to that, I have create, uh, uh, created a user uh, called my who has been given the necessary permission to create and publish APIs. I will log in with his credentials now.
now i am going to import the schema in order to create the country's api so i have imported the schema file and here now i am going to add in basic details of the api country api context info version 100 so this is my endpoint and uh, gold unlimited as the business plan is created now you can see all the operation that included in the schema have been listed in the OV and the imported schema uh, can be uh, found at here also it is able to uh, download here uh, let's navigate to operation page here this is where the place that i am able to add operation level authorization rate limiting and security let me explain briefly how security authorization rate limiting works in the gateway for graphql apis here security are disable enable means whether an access token is needed or not to invoke the that particular operation for graphql the query can include either single operation or multiple operations when the query has multiple operation security will work considering the security configuration of all the operation in the given query that means when a query has security enabled for a single operation the security is automatically applied for all the other operations as well authorization will work uh, considering the operation scope configuration of all the operations in the given query that means when a requested query has multiple operation the access token needs to include all the authorized scope that have been attached with each of the operation uh, rate limiting uh, and api uh, request will uh, consider the overall rate limiting policies of the operations in the given query so when uh, request exceed the minimum rate limit which correspond to that uh, operation of the query the whole request will be throttled out so what will happen uh, when the uh, requested query includes a single operation so this time security authorization and rate limiting will work considering the configuration of that particular operation let's consider use case of my uh, as an api creator mike wants to add these characteristics for continents and languages operation so first rule is for continents operation which needs to be authorized only for managers and second uh, rule is to restrict its invocation count to one request per minute and third rule is for languages operation this operation should be accessible for everyone even without a token in order to fulfill the requirements of my i am navigating to uh, uh, navigating to scope page in order to add a new scope called continents continents uh, the scope which allows only for managers and i have already created the role called manager click save and i have already uh, created new advanced throttling policy at the admin portal which defines one request per minute let's go back to the operation page now i am uh, adding the created scope to continuous operation okay and disable the security for languages uh, after i select the rate limit into operational level and add the required policy called one request per minute for continuous operation okay uh, so now i am going to save the changes okay 
uh, as REST APIs, GraphQL APIs are also eligible to do various kind of functionalities like lifecycle management, versioning, modifying uh, design runtime configuration, enabling monetization, setting properties, adding a documentation, and etc. Now I am going to publish the design API navigating to lifecycle page. Click published. Okay, uh, you can see uh, the country's API is in published state. It is categorized as GraphQL type API. So this is helpful to identify them separately from other APIs when the portal has a lot of APIs. Let's go to the developer portal, check whether the uh, published API is available at there. Uh, yes, it is there. Now I'm going to explain a use case of Jane, who is an application developer. I have created a username Jane, who has been given the manager role and necessary permission to subscribe to APIs. Now I will log in with her credentials. Chain, and this is the password. Okay. So Chain should be able to download the schema definition file of the country's API here, uh, and uh, should be able to see all the operation names that are available to query. So when click the test, tryout console will be populated to try out the queries. And uh, let's say chain plans to invoke the uh, country's API for three different requirements. First plan is to retrieve code and name of all languages. So that time query would be like this. And second plan is to retrieve name of all countries and code name of all languages in each country. Uh, then her requested query would be like this. And third plan is to retrieve name of all continents, name of all, all countries in each continent, uh, code name of all languages in each country. So this time that query would be like this. Let's fulfill the chain's requirement. There are several scenarios that chains can try out for the API invocations to fulfill her three requirement. Now I am Jane. I am going to try each of these scenarios one by one to check her capabilities. As first requirement, I am going to invoke the API uh, in order to retrieve the language's details without a token. Then a request will be successful as the language's operation has been disabled the security. Let's try it. Okay, so this is my query. Now you can see the response object is given the list of languages. Now I have completed the first requirement and second requirement. There are two possibilities. First I am trying to invoke the API without a token to retrieve the country list. So uh, this time request will be failed as country's operation has been enabled the security. Uh, let's try it. So this is the query and copied it and paste it in here. Now it says invalid credentials. Uh, let's try this in playground. So here. 
you can see uh, without API manager, it is able to retrieve the data. So now uh, I'm going to uh, invoke the API uh, with the token. Then the request will be successful when query, when uh, required uh, credential provided with the request. Let's try it. Uh, in order to do that, we have to subscribe to the country's API. Now I'm going to subscribe to the API, creating a new app uh, called country app. App for retrieve information of continents countries and languages okay click next now you can see we have uh, subscribed to the country api successfully and click next to generate the keys i have copied the token and pasted it in access token field at the tryout console now i am going to try out the same query so this is my query now you can see the response object displayed the list of countries with the name code and name uh, code and the name of each of their languages now i have fulfilled the second requirement as third requirement there are several possibilities let's consider these two uh, together uh, in order to retrieve the information of continents uh, when try to uh, invoke the api uh, without token the request will uh, fail as both continents and countries uh, operation are uh, enable the security also when trying to invoke the api with default score token uh, the request will be failed as the continence operation is given the continuous scope let's try it so for the third requirement this is the query So I have already a uh, previous token uh, which has the default score. Uh, now click execute. Now you can see uh, it says the access token does not allow to access the requested resource. So once I remove the token, let's see what happened. It says invalid credential. But uh, once we try out this in uh, GraphQL playground, you can see it is able to retrieve the data. Okay. Uh, to uh, invoke the API with a token which has a scope called continence. In order to do that, I go back to the developer portal and generate the token regional token with uh, adding the scope called continents here when generated you can see uh, it has already continents scope now I have copied it and paste it in countries API tryout concept now I'm going to execute the uh, same query. So this is the query. Now you can see the response object display the list of continents with the name, included countries with the name, and languages that are used in each country. 
now I have fulfilled the third requirement. But when send the uh, second request, uh, it will be failed because continuous operation is given the one request per minute policy. Let's try it. You can see it says uh, you have exceed your quota. Uh, so Jane can't invoke the API till one minute period time period is passed. Yes, I'm going to try out this in uh, GraphQL uh, playground. Here it works fine. Now, what happened when uh, remove the manager role from Jen? The request will fail without required permission for Jen to access the continuous operation. Let's try it. In order to do that, uh, I'm logging to the uh, Carbon console as an admin. Now I'm going to use a list and pick up the uh, chains view roles. And now, now I'm going to remove the manager role from chain. Finish. Now you can see chains role, uh, manager role is not assigned for chain. Now I'm going to generate the, regenerate the token by adding the continuous score. Okay, I have copied the token and paste it in access token field at the tryout console. And now I'm going to execute same query. Sorry. Now you can see it says the access token uh, does not allow to access the requested resource. GraphQL playground it is able to retrieve the data. See? Okay. Uh, that's the end of the demonstration. Uh, let's go back to the presentation. So uh, this explains all the scenarios that Jane has tried out and what kind of invocation flaws that she can uh, follow to fulfill her requirements according to the rules enforced by Mike in the API. This is the key, uh, key role that WS2 API manager plays, being an additional layer to provide significant value to GraphQL operation along with the operational security, authorization, and throttling. We hope you understood the importance of having this layer and how we can expose GraphQL services as managed APIs via WS2 API Manager. Meantime, we are actively working on several upcoming features which have been included in our roadmap. So first one is threat protection. So we are going to introduce the threat protection mechanism which is important for GraphQL to secure their uh, secure GraphQL services by detecting and blocking malicious queries. And another one is operational level analytic support to allow uh, get fine grain insight on query data that are requested on the backend. And support a WebSocket subscription in order to support real time communication and micro gateway support for GraphQL APIs. As we all know, WS2 micro gateway is a cloud native API gateway that can be used to expose one or many microservices as APIs. Therefore, we are trying to support this capability for GraphQL APIs along with the SDL file. Well, that is the end of our uh, presentation for this webinar. Uh, now we would like to answer a few questions related to this discussion. Please send the questions that you have. Uh, we will try to choose a few of them and answer before the, we wind up this session.
Okay, so we have one question. Uh, so it says, can we use GraphQL resources with API products? Uh, well, unfortunately, no. Uh, currently, API products can be created uh, only using REST API resources. Uh, but we are planning to support this for uh, GraphQL in uh, near future. Uh, although uh, it is not in our immediate roadmap. Okay, uh, right. We have another question as well. Hirani, can you go? Yes. Uh, there's another question. When a query has multiple operations, where each of the operation is configured to have different levels of uh, scope, shouldn't the server respond the result related to the other operation if the token doesn't have all the scope? Yes, the answer is no. So according to the GraphQL concept, the response should follow the same structure of the query. Therefore, we, we do not allow the query to reach the backend if uh, it doesn't have all the scopes related to that operations. Okay, we are waiting for a few. Uh, maybe we can take one or two more questions. Uh, Okay, we have one more. Uh, does APIM CLI uh, support exposing the schema definition? Uh, the answer is yes. You can export a GraphQL API in uh, one environment and uh, import it to another environment using the APIM CLI tool. Uh, and the schema also will be exported and imported along with it. So there is. Okay. 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 okay that's all. Right. Okay. Uh, that's uh, all the question we are going to take for now. Uh, however, we would definitely send out the answers for the uh, rest of the questions which we were not able to answer now via email very soon and uh, we would like to ask every one of you to try out the graphql feature in api manager 3.0 and provide feedback or any issues you encounter via our slack channel logic hub uh, so uh, that's what we have for you today we hope uh, it has been an informative and useful session for all of you. Uh, also, uh, there will be a several interesting upcoming webinars in next couple of weeks. You can follow them on our website. Uh, we would like to thank each one of our attendees for taking time to attend this webinar and showing interesting uh, on uh, WS2 technologies and helping us build this platform. Thank you very much. Have a good day.